Hi all. Uh, next lecture two session of uh, Android software testing, the test management and the defect management. This is a unit five. So in this session we will try to understand the uh, in continuation of uh, what we have studied in the previous session. So in the previous session uh, we studied about uh, uh, test management. Uh, Understanding what is test management means, so it has a configuration management and test management itself. So you know, in configuration management, we have configuration items. And in test management, uh, test process, how test process relates to the software, the model, design by contract, test driven development, agile development process, etc. We can uh, study about that. And uh, oh, what is test management? Test management mostly, most commonly, you refers to the activity of managing the computer software, the testing process, uh, right from the test planning till the test execution and reporting. We will study what it means uh, in the next slides. What is configuration management? We know that uh, any items that are to be controlled in terms of changing or Delivering etc. in terms of software testing, and it includes also the supporting documents. All these are all part of the configuration management. For examples: we have test cases, test plan, any documents, SRS. All these all are part of the configuration management. <coughs> configuration management elements are configuration items, configuration control, configuration status accounting, and configuration audit. These are four main elements of the Configuration management activity. Okay, the configuration control can have hardware, software, documents, methods, tools, whatever it is, it could be. And uh, we do uh, status accounting in terms of uh, accounting all the configuration items. And uh, audit will uh, ensure that the it is with a compliance of what is being planned. So in the general, we had seen. The definition of a CM process as for the military standard HTBK 61A or ANSI standard. So, the disciplines are planning, configuration identification, configuration control, status accounting, and verification and audit. And their details we had studied about CM planning and management, configuration identification, control, status accounting, verification, and audit. And we had seen the model how it looks like the various blocks of or the elements of the configuration management. Configuration identification deals with the identification of configuration items, labeling of the CIs, it should be unique, how it should be, versioning, and all that. We will try to study in detail about the software configuration management today and what are the naming and versioning conventions that are followed in the industry. Identification of baselines. So, what is baseline and all that? Configuration control deals with the change control, baseline establishment, version management, configuration status accounting, recording and reporting information, describing configuration and items and their status. So, the information will have what are the configuration items, to whom it is addressed, when it was assigned, how it is going to be moved to the next stage. Configuration audit basically does the auditing of the product configuration, its maturity, completeness, compliance with requirements, integrity and accuracy. And we have configuration management and testing, uh, what should be configuration management, all test documentation and test wares including tools and all that artifacts and the test environment, the product to be tested why it needs to be configured and tested also the traceability part so that is where is important place in terms of all the relevant documents that needs to be traceable to one of the other documents part of the software life cycle for the embedded software testing that is where we use configuration management elements 
So now coming to SCM software configuration management. So SCM is the process of identifying and defining the items in the system, controlling the changes of these items throughout the life cycle, recording and reporting the status of items on change requests and verifying the completeness and correctness of items. So why SCM when changes in a products that are being developed we need software configuration management to control the changes so that they have minimal effect on the cost schedule and quality basically we need to control the changes so that minimally the impact is being mitigated addressed. It helps in development and change implementation activities. SM activities help in accomplishing software quality assurance. SM tools helps in tracking and changes made along with the respective name. And as we have seen, these are the SM activities blocked, like in terms of planning, control management, status accounting, release process, auditing, and identification. Okay. Now coming to The today's session of test management and configuration management, we will try to understand the software configuration management activities. So, what are the things that are involved in SCM planning? So, SCM plan is a document basically which serves as a reference for the SCM process, it defines the types of documents to be managed, like the requirement specification documents, design documents, etc. The kinds of documents which are subject to frequent changes are considered to get managed. This plan all defines the document naming scheme based on the customer suggestion or any consensus that are happening within the configuration item. The plan suggests who will be taking the responsibilities of SEM procedures. The document defines the SEM record which is required to be maintained. The SEM record basically identifies all the space of the changes and who is owning it, who is responsible. The plan also describes the SEM tools like uh, clear case or uh, dimensions etc, PVCS dimensions, visual source safe, SVN, JIT, there are a lot of uh, tools that are there in the industry. So these tools are basically used for carrying out the SEM activities. So the pros and cons of the tool also and the tool selection basis also are mentioned in the plan. Maintaining the SEM plan it is also called as SEMP, there is a document separately mentioned for that, it is also mentioned in the document. So basically all these are involved in the SEM planning. So to define the SEM process how it should be carried out, it identifies the types of documents to be managed like requirement specification design etc. Also the plan will specify about the document naming scheme how the various documents throughout the software configuration should be named. The plan suggests who will be taking the responsibilities of SEM procedures, planning defines the SEM record, the plan also describes the SEM tools. Okay. Continuation of the SEM activities software configuration identification, these steps deals in identifying the items to be controlled, establishing uh, identification schemes for the items and their versions and establishing the tools and techniques to be used in managing the controlled items. Establish the configuration baseline for each configuration items, baselining basically baselining is a very important uh, activity that involves a managerial agreement on the content of a configurable item by a configuration control board. There is a board called CCB which involves a subject matter expert in terms of CM, project management etc. Basically they define and they come to a conclusion that this item can be baseline, baseline is a basically an event on which all the rest of the subsystems or the sub events are going to take place like requirement as baseline means that baseline will be used for testing, that baseline can be used for component testing, integration testing, system testing depending on the type of baseline that we have. 
similarly we can have baselines for the test artifacts also like test cases. So we have developed the test cases and we come to a conclusion saying that these test cases are enough to go ahead for the next stage of activities. So we say that as a test cases frozen this frozen is nothing but the baselining. Define naming scheme to identify the software configuration items of each and every document that means naming scheme and uh, identification of that configuration item is also an important aspect so that also will be done in the same activities. Basically software configuration identification deals in identifying the items to be controlled establishing the identification schemes for the items and directions and establishing the tools and techniques to be used in managing the control events. Here we establish the configuration baseline for each of the configuration item. Baselining involves a manager agreement as I said of the content of the configuration item and it is called as a baseline data. And the naming scheme also can be provided by the customer, or if customer can also have some kind of configuration, so we may need to align with the his configuration. Basically, this is also an important thing that we need to understand. Aligning the artifacts with customer configuration is also not the important aspect because he will also have some sort of a test artifacts or development artifacts or any other items that he wants to control along with the vendor or the contractor deliverables. So suppose we are a developer or sorry we are a contractor or we are a delivery team delivering to the customer then we may need to align to the configuration whatever the customer has or it is also possible that he may ask for some suggestion to have a configuration by ourselves so that we can control by ourselves that itself becomes an activity on its own. So that is what we do with the SEM process in identifying the software configuration ok. Next one is after we identify the software identification of the documents we need to control it basically that is what is called as software configuration control. So basically what we do here is managing the life cycle changes the life cycle changes could be any of the test cases procedures execution scripts any input documents any reporting events etc all these life cycle artifacts and its changes maintenance will have to be managed that is what we do with the configuration control process related to what changes to make the authority to approve the changes supporting the implementation of changes all this will be part of the software configuration control. Next one is the concept of formal deviation from the project requirements suppose the requirement is going to change and there is a deviation in some sort of a activity then we need to control that as well in terms of deviation process. The process of identifying what changes to make involves the formal procedure for submitting and recording change requests evaluating the cost and impact of a proposed change. All the change requests are recorded in a change report. This is a change report that will identify what changes have been done. So, what is the request against which the changes have been done, and what is the conclusion? Who is the author? Who is responsible? How it is controlled? All this will be part of the change report. An evaluation is done to determine the extent of modifications that would be necessary. So, basically, along with the change request, the change request will be evaluated to determine what is the modification or the change that is going to 
happen. So the after the evaluation what we do is there is a CCB change control board so basically it comprises both technical and non technical people in terms of deciding whether the change is necessary and can go ahead for the next updates that will be decided decided in the CCB change control board. So basically CCB evaluates the technical and managerial aspects of the change request and either they will accept or ask some changes in the updates that are required or they may defer it or they may reject it for the change request. So CCB has the full authority to accept or reject the proposed changes. The approved changes will be implemented using the SEM tools is it configuration control tool that will be used which provide version management capability. So this changes have to be definitely controlled that is what we do with the software configuration control. So throughout the life cycle of the test artifacts it is going to be many changes. The managing the changes is covered in software configuration and control step. This step is concerned with covering the process related to what changes to make, the authority to approve the changes, supporting the implementation of changes, all this will be controlled. In addition to these activities, it covers the concept of deviation from the project requirements. The process of identifying what changes to make was the formal procedure for submitting and recording change requests and evaluating them evaluation also in terms of cost schedule what are the changes that the proposed change is going to make and we may identify some resources we may identify tools to make the change what is the procedure we are going to follow any customer involvement also is required all will be decided this decision will be taken care by the SCB sorry CCB that is a configuration control board and the source of change also will be identified during that CCB meeting a customer request it could be an enhancement it could be a solution for a solution for a bug or some kind of a optimization whatever it could be all those changes have to be controlled and it should be documented in a change request it is called SCR software change request if it is a software change also called as SCR if it is a change request from a problem that has been identified before it is called as SPR or software problem report basically that identifies where is a bug what change of what kind of a changes what is the cost and all that will be information provided and based on that the CCB will meet and decide on the change request. And in some projects these changes are communicated using a defect tracking tools such as Bugzilla for a particular change a bug is opened and all communications are done through that particular bug and relevant stakeholders should be communicated accordingly. So that itself will become a SCR or the software change request that will be maintained within the tool and automatically it is going to get recorded who is owning that change and who is responsible, who is doing the evaluation all this will be taken care. So once an SCR is prepared or all the change requests are recorded in the work an evaluation is done to determine the extent of modifications that would be necessary. Based on this information the CCB or the change configuration control board evaluates the technical and managerial aspects of the change request and either they accept modify reject, or defer the change request. CCB has the full authority to accept or reject. In some projects Uh, CCB members are part of the offshore team and in some 
CCTV members are entirely from the customer side also it could be or it is a mix of both customer and the, the uh, other side like the offshore team or uh, test team or any relevant stakeholders test engineer or test lead anyone who is uh, responsible. So the approved changes will be implemented using the SEM tools which provide version management capabilities examples like uh, CVS, VSS, SVN uh, which basically provides the version control capabilities here version control capabilities are something like uh, check in, add, check in, check out these are possible these are, are the basic capabilities of the tools basically it helps in uh, uh, identify the, uh, the elements which are going to be added which are going to be checked in which are going to be checked, in, checked out which are going to be moving to a different stages all this part of the SEM tool. So detail of all these things are not uh, in the scope of this embedded software testing but as a basic understanding we need to know that software configuration control will be done through the SEM tools. SEM tools help in terms of adding an element checking in uh, basically which will help in terms of creating a version and check out for modifying anything we need to check out the element we need to update it and we are going to check in back so that it will be in the repository of the server and uh, that check in check out can continue for different stakeholders in terms of review rework release and freeze all these stages can be done. Next one the software configuration status accounting. So software configuration status accounting provides the means to record and report on configuration data it involves creating a knowledge base information necessary to manage configuration effectively its purpose is to provide the configuration information that is required to required for configuration management uh, basically uh, it has all the information necessary to manage the configuration item basically. So it maintains the information about the configuration documentation it maintains the uh, products configuration such as version numbers or changes done on a particular artifacts. It maintains information about the products operational and maintenance documentation such as departments affected by each change and their update status. Information about the CM process such as the status of change requests all this will be part of the configuration status. Software configuration status accounting enables retrieval of information concerning change decisions and provides a source for configuration history of a product and all of its configuration documentation. All the data collected during configuration status accounting is maintained in configuration status accounting report SEAR it is also called as. Configuration status accounting helps in establishing and maintaining configuration records for the configuration items. Okay, all this will be part of the project. The project will have this information in terms of any of the configuration identification done on the different artifacts and how it is controlled. Uh, who is maintaining it, so where the documentation is about and the status of each of these items will be part of the accounting this itself is an activity. So in a frequency they will generate this report and that report will go into the next stage of the SM activities that is called audit. So the audit will be done by the auditee who will ensure that each configuration item meets its requirements basically. So based on the summary that we have seen in the status accounting the configuration audit auditor will audit the various artifacts that to make sure that 
each configuration item is meeting its requirements is part of that particular activity. A software audit is an activity performed independently is very important this will be done outside the team usually QA can be involved or there is any independent body that is designated to take care of this audit activity. Basically they perform independently to evaluate the conformance of software products and processes to the standards, guidelines, plans and procedures. So there are planned ways of controlling and identifying and doing the process of SEM all these SEM activities will be audited with the help of auditor. <coughs> Software configuration audits help in verifying that configuration management task for a particular CI has successfully achieved all of, all of the requirements specified in the configuration baselines. So configuration baseline will be identified with the details in the configuration management plan all this against that will be verified actually. And uh, there are two types of uh, audits that are done in uh, uh, I take an example of one of the industry that we follow those two types of audits are FCA functional configuration audit otherwise physical configuration audit. So what are those functional configuration audit is done to ensure that a configuration item to audit it is consistent with its specification. So there is a requirement there is a specification <coughs> we make sure that as per the specification it is consistently being followed and all the CIs are appropriately configured <coughs> that is what we do with the configuration functional configuration audit. Okay. The next one is physical configuration audit. So this is basically done to ensure that the design and reference documentation is consistent with the built software product. That means whatever eventually we are going to build, whatever we are going to test, whatever we are going to deliver is consistent again and again with the changes with the configuration that we have, that we have in the configuration repository. That is what we physically verify against the references that we have in the documentation. Here we do with the consistent consistency check with respect to the specification what we have specified. Basically, what we do is we verify that the software function and its performances. Uh, they are really comply with the requirement and that impact of deviation if any are analyzed and controlled all this functionality in terms of how configuration is uh, performed is all will be checked with the help of functional configuration audit. Uh, in physical configuration audit we will check for the hierarchy the physical representation naming conventions all this will be uh, are they ready in a a complete stage or what is that being followed. So that is about our same activities of software configuration audit. So we have gone through the software configuration identification, software configuration control, software configuration accounting and software configuration audit these four elements are the basic elements that are used in SEM activities. And planning is of course part of the either project management plan or we can have it as a separate uh, SEM uh, plan itself. Some industry like aerospace they have a separate plan and that is a deliverable this itself is a configuration item again. So this is a mandatory to have industries like aerospace so we need to have a SEMP or software configuration management plan document ok. Now let us try to go through configuration item for life cycle. So, what are the configurable items it could be in the uh, embedded software life cycle and how they are going to be baseline. So, we know that baseline is an event where we are going to baseline that particular artifact saying that that artifact is ready to move for next stage or next event or 
it is available. So, that will be spoken in the configuration identified list basically. Okay, so you can see two columns. One is the CI list, the various documents and the artifacts. On the right-hand side, you can see a baseline event upon which baseline event. This will be called as baseline. These items are called as baseline. I picked up few examples for a more, from a typical embedded industry. Okay, we when we we get a outsourced embedded software testing or embedded software project. Development it could be so. What we do is we first get the proposal or the contract or the statement of work. So all this will be configurable again because there could be a change right over a period. So definitely the change control has to happen and those should be part of the CI. Okay. So the event is on receipt from the customer. We are going to have a request for proposal or RFP or we can get a statement of work from the customer, so that itself is the baseline. We are going to baseline it, and we have a proposal. Uh, internally, we develop the technical team and the manager, or the test manager, or the lead. And the proposal, once we approve internally with the help of a senior uh, management team, we are going to say it as a baseline event. So this proposal will be will be submitted to the customer. Okay, the next. The element of the life cycle is all customer supplied items. When the contract is awarded, they are going to have a statement of work, custom supplied any standards, any coding rules, specifications, guidelines, customer requirements, or any tools you can provide, any board, for example, target board for testing, any equipments, etc. All this are Considered as imported items, we will maybe try to touch base this important uh, uh, configurable items uh, maybe in a future slide. All this will be part of the CA, and that is called as a baseline when we receive from the customer. All planning documents that we have internally, like project management plan. Project testing plan, all this will be approved by the senior management, and we are going to have it called as a baseline. Then we have engineering outputs like requirement specification, design, source code, test plans, etc. This also should be approved stage by stage by the customer or senior management or a project management. If it is internal project or if it is customer oriented project, based on that. This will be called as a baseline event, and against the baseline event, we are going to baseline the particular CAs or configuration items. And any project specific checklist templates, this also can be a configuration items, and this basically needs to be approved by the quality team so that the baseline can be created. Then we have the test environment or the project environment, this will be identified as and when. In the project and approved by the project manager or the test manager. And next one is the hardware tools, test facilities used to validate the product. It could be a test equipment, test machines, laptops, any wiring glue uh, boards, any target boards, any emulators, simulators, any flash programmers, all this part of the hardware and tools that directly affects the quality of the final product. All this will be controlled through CI list, and that also needs to be approved by the project manager to make it as a baseline. That's what uh, configuration items typically follow in the embedded software testing or embedded software lifecycle. Okay. The next one is uh, about uh, SCM. Uh, Phases. What are the software configuration management phases that are involved? Those are four phases: initiation, planning, execution, and closure. It, this will go in a circular fashion. That's why I have put a simple arrow to identify at each end of the arrow: planning, sorry, initiation, planning, execution, and closure. 
So, what are we going to do in initiation? What are we going to do in planning? What we are going to do in execution? And how are you going to close it? So, these are basic elements of the SCM. So, okay. Initiation. So, what are we going to initiate? We are going to initiate software configuration management by appointing a configuration controller. Basically, he controls all the configuration systems. And we are going to appoint CCB as I said configuration control board which could comprise I will uh, try to put con sorry configuration controller it can also be called as an admin who can maintain all the artifacts under the configuration configure Configure configuration control board, which could comprise of a PM and a CC. It could be a TL, a team member, or test member. It can also involve customer as well. So basically, these people will take a appointment in terms of CCB when we define the project plan or the test plan. And for doing these activities, we need training. So that is also called as configuration control training. And there are various roles and responsibilities that we have for each of the configuration initiation activity. So, for example, we have a program. Sorry, project manager. His responsibility would be SCM planning, and we will do SCM activities monitoring or tracking, and he is also a CCB member. So, by becoming a member, what he does is he will also be equally responsible for taking the decisions for the changes. Next one is the configuration controller CC, also called as a CC. So he will basically provide inputs to PM for what SEM planning. He will ensure that the work products. Are identified because we need to identify the configuration items, and we should make sure that it is controlled. That means all the check-in, check-out, admin activities, creating the folders, uh, locations, all this will be taken care by the CC or the configuration controller, and he is also responsible for. Version control. He will basically do the base training. He will do the status routing, as I said in earlier slide. Information about the baseline information, baseline artifacts in the repository of the configuration control should be reported. All these are deliverables. It could be, or it could be CIs. So basically, he has. The ownership of controlling it basically. Still, the individuals or the test member or the test engineer has the responsibility of controlling in terms of individual items like a source file or test cases, etc. But overall, the CC takes care of the complete control. Next is the CCB. So this board basically comprising. CC, PM, test lead, and it can involve customer and SM, that is senior manager also. So this board basically authorizes
the CI's identification and the project baseline and changes. So these are some of the important activities and they should approve also because without approval changes will not occur. So those are some of the responsibility of the responsibilities of the project manager CC and CCB this will be initiated during the initiation phase of the SCI. The next one is a planning. So planning what we do basically we will identify the project CI identification of project folder structure and access rights this is very important thing CC will take care of this folder structure will be created and who should own read access who should own the write access who should own no access who should own change access all this part of a permission will be granted or denied by the CC based on the project planning and identifying the criteria for baselining and rebaselining identifying the naming and labeling of the conventions that are followed and identifying identification of change control mechanism how it is going to be changed preparation of CM audit plan as I said configuration items have to be audited for the status accounting and the plan against that that preparation will be planned uh, frequency or duration of that all this will be part of the planning then this is also important to review and based on the CM plan itself will be part of the planning. The next two SCM phases are execution and closure. In execution, what we do is any configuration management issue we are going to resolve. SCM audits is also part of the SCM execution. Change management is also in execution. Maintenance, maintain the list of CI, import, export items list like customer, customer deliverables, customer supplied materials, returnables after the project is over all this will be part of the execution which will take as an activity during the SCM and of course maintain the control library and repositories that repositories have to be regularly backed up or archived that is what the maintenance means backup archive and deletion basically there is a term called retention there is a retention period any project is supposed to have a retention period why because that may go for a callback or that may go for a rollover or that need to be maintained again uh, triggered from the customer input or internal or any maintenance or warranty or guarantee whatever is required till that period retention has to be taken care so all this will be part of the execution that is defined in the SEM plan this is the important SEM phase lastly what we are going to do the SEM phase is the closure once the, all the project activities are done we are going to have the SEM closure so return of materials as applicable we are going to return either to the customer or uh, to the vendor if we have rented out any power supplies sort of a material we are going to return them and conduct closure meeting with identified stakeholders we need to conduct closure meetings of the project so what basically it does is uh, uh, it identifies uh, any lessons or practices that we have done in the project we are going to document it and that also can be configured and closed. Once we have done all this we are going to archive the elements the CIs as needed we are going to create a backup and put a retention and a safety plan in terms of where to keep what is the location and all that this will be part of the closure activities. The next one is 
example let's try to understand a cm process example uh, how is going to be defined and all that so simple uh, way of doing the team, objective we are going to define the objective of the cm process to identify items for configuration to manage baseline to control changes and library of configurable items to monitor the status to perform reviews audits and release process of configurable items throughout the life cycle of the project and scope of the same process is cover covers the planning and execution of configuration management related activities including version control change management and release management this process is followed in all the phases of the project life cycle as identified in the project management plan or the project plan this process applies to all configuration based items documents software and hardware when required by development agreement proposal the process may also apply after delivery of the product you need to have this process so what are the cm process tasks example tasks establish the cm environment configuration management environment identify the cis create intermediate and final product baselines raise cr pr cr is change request pr is a problem report the change request could be due to problem report also problem report is nothing but identifying a problem of the tested software or tested feature and reporting them to the relevant stakeholder it could be a development team it could be a customer or a vendor anyone <coughs> basically is part of the modification in this software life cycle perform change analysis for the pr and approve or reject the changes required this is also an important process report status of software life cycle date items baselines pr to the relevant stakeholders and maintain the configuration management records this is also one of the process task okay so next the same activities process from the admin perspective as i said admin could be a change controller or dedicated change control could be there admin can be the phone but most of the mid size projects uh, the admin and the change controller will be same for the particular project identified so what he does is he does perform archival retrieval release activities he does the follow data retention mechanism for the sdlc data items as i said retention is an important thing we need to retain the project life cycle artifacts till the term or the guarantee or the project is maintained in the organization with relation to the customer perform load control of the software product manage software life cycle environment and qualify tools that is also part of the admin as part of the cm activities next is this status accounting so what we do with the status accounting is that we keep track of the current identification of cis configuration of delivered product status of change request status of approved changes all this will be reported in a report format that's what we do with the status accounting basically there is a frequency like biweekly or weekly or monthly depending on the project nature and the size and other aspects we are going to do the status accounting accordingly okay and uh, the status accounting can also report uh, some of the items like uh, number of uh, fcm issues basically this is done by the cc or the admin for that particular project uh, what are the deliverables deliverables so there are right deliverable accepted rejected by customer all this will be reported and effort spent on fcm activities by the cc
and uh, uh, effort spent by team team not on development or testing by on the yes, like checking check out all the regular activities in terms of configuration control and uh, another important thing is uh, change requests its numbers accepted rejected on hold open close so all this sort of a information will be part of the change request status report can be done by the status accounting mechanism so what we do with the status accounting okay next coming to the important item called version control so what is a version so anything so that identifies one configuration item with a number or the name that process is called versioning so configuration item will be versioned the version number of ca is is maintained in the following format in general i am talking about basically draft versions will have 0 0.01 0.02 or 0.2 or it can have something like a b c or alpha beta theta whatever it could be so basically it is identified with an example of 0.1 0.2 etc till it becomes matured and complete it will be flowing like this so you may argue like after 0.9 what i'll do you can easily go with 0.91 0.92 etc till it reaches 1.0 basically we call 1.0 as a baseline version and that 1.0 version could have multiple baselines in next versions like 2.0 3.0 basically this is a major Versioning. This will be taken care with the higher number in the integer. So, what will happen with 1.0 if there are changes are going to happen? We can create as 1.1, or we can create as 1.0a, 1.0a, 1.0b, 1.2, etc. It is up to the definition or the planning of the scm how we are going to have this remember this has to be done during the scm planning and if any major minor changes and major changes are to be versioned that can be versioned with 1.1 1.2 any major changes it will be 2.0 3.0 and once the major changes are done we can make it as a baseline 10.0 something like this so this is what we do with the version control okay the next important thing is the baseline so what do you mean by a baseline a baseline is defined as a milestone in the development of software that is marked by the release of one or more configuration items and approval of these items is obtained through a formal review so everything has to be formal so we call it as a baseline version or a baseline for an item it is a milestone in the development or testing of the software that is marked by the release of one or more cis it's very important thing configuration items and it requires a approval of those items which are going to be obtained through a review process as we have seen in our earlier session it is a formal review that review items have to be completed and closed upon which we are going to say that the product is matured and reviewed and complete and against that we are going to create a milestone by the name called as a by a baseline <laughs> so minimum baselines we can have initial baseline delivery baseline other baselines and it could be intermediate baselines also and of course the kind of baselines we can create in terms of versioning is minor baseline major baseline but usually they have a minor baseline major baseline such as initial baseline and delivery baseline and uh, after delivery or the before the final delivery we can have intermediate baselines such as srs design testing baselines this will be part of the baseline activities
okay so the next one is <coughs> workspace management how and workspace is getting managed we know that baseline has to be created in a repository and that repository needs to be taken care by all the stakeholders right from the scm process people test team development team etc so definitely there is a need of the workspace the workspace is nothing but the placeholder having identified and available items such as ci items in the project that's what we do with the workspace management how are we going to manage in general this picture you can see there is a baseline repository something like a server and this server the files will be either put or taken out with the help of a process called check in and check out and this will be done by individuals that is called individual workspace that will be there in the desktop and for testing and verification workspace we have a separate repository and separate files will be there and that will be again using the baseline repository all these life cycles have to go through the repository that is called baseline repository and it is part of the workspace management and uh, this all will be taken care by the individual as well as the maintenance and the control of that will be done by the cc or the chain controller configuration controller storage retrieval is performed in the controlled manner the format location access control procedure like writes and all that backup and recovery procedure how are you going to backup and how are you going to recover suppose some file is deleted we are going to recover it after we get an incident report from the individual or the users so we will have a backup and the backup will be used for recovery all this will be defined in the workspace management okay so so that is what we have studied about the different same activities process status accounting version control baseline and workspace management in the next class we will study about the change management incident management revision history how it should be and the configuration management tools etc so with that we will conclude today's session of the configuration management